It's India's moment to shine on the global stage and it's rather fitting that we're hosting the G20 Summit right here in the national capital. And it's my absolute pleasure to be joined by Sadhguru here in Delhi. <laughs> Namaskaram, Namaskaram Sadhguru. <laughs> what brings you to Delhi? Have you found spruced up new New Delhi much better than before? Uh, I think the floods have really washed Delhi clean. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me, I was in the um, water. <laughs> I'm glad some beautification is going on, it's really nice. But what brings me to Delhi, I'm on the way to Kailash. Mm. But uh, this year, still Indians don't have permission to enter Tibet, so we are having darshan of Kailash from Nepal. But over 600 people who are of different passports other than Indian, we are taking them through Tibet. Hmm. But the Indian nationals, we are at the edge. <laughs> Sad. Maybe that will change hopefully in the coming months. It should change. And hopefully next year you'll be able to visit. Uh, but Sadhguru, everyone's talking about the group of 20 nations, the G20, which means that you've got the top world leaders all coming down to Delhi, all coming down to India. Everyone's saying that this is India's moment to shine. How do you really view the G20 and how India's position in the global world, in the world order really has changed? See, definitely uh, it's a moment that India should make use of because these twenty nations literally determine everything that happens in the world. Whether the world will be peaceful, will, we, will it be at war, will it be prosperous, will it be poor, mm. is determined be by these twenty leaders. So when they are assembling in our country, and uh, for the second time, this is the end of the term. Correct. I think it's very significant, normally they don't do that, but all of them are coming here. Uh, one significant player is missing for whatever geopolitical reasons, otherwise everybody else is here, which is very, very significant and we must celebrate and calibrate ourselves to use it to the well-being of the nation and for the world because See, probably this is the first time that an international group of uh, this kind of G20, Correct. a powerful group of people talking about one earth, one family, one future, I don't think it's ever happened. Mm. This is our nature, that we are not conquerors, we embrace the world. We embrace the world and make it a part of ourselves, mm. rather than conquer the world and sit on top of people's heads because Somewhere deep in the Indian psyche, we are excited about our differences. Hmm. We don't see differences as discrimination. This is a very outside thing for us. Oh, your skin is brown, so I think this. Your skin is white, so I think you're something else. It's black, I think something else. This is not ingrained in us. Do you really think so? Because there's so much talk about us being very discriminatory. Uh, this is because... Uh, Certain part of the media, I'm sorry I'm saying <laughs> this, their brains are not in India, their brains are outside of Greenwich Mean Time. I wish they were in the Atlantic, but they're somewhere else. So whatever is said there, the same things they repeat, racism, this, that. Racism doesn't normally exist in 99.9% .9 of the Indian population's mind. Mm. I'll assure you this hundred percent, I know people. They may have other discriminations as people have, wealth, this one, that one, caste, creed is there, but that is not on racial basis. Sure. So, I see a lot of certain type of gender journalists always writing racism, 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 because they're just parrots of the West, they keep repeating the same thing, it's irrelevant. At one time, they've had their cacophony dominating, I don't think it's anymore so. Mm. The journalism in India also has gone through a huge evolution in the last ten, fifteen years' time. So, uh, people like you, young people are here who are a new Thank generation, <laughs> who are born in an independent India, who are thinking for yourself. Naturally, you th when you think for yourself and your well-being, that's how you create well-being of the nation. If people are not well, how is the nation well? So it's very important, people thinking for their well-being. You don't understand this as this is against the nation. No, you're thinking for your well-being, it's good. Hmm. Because if you're well, and like you, every other person is well, that is when the nation is well, that's the whole thing. So this is a great moment for India, I would say. 
It is not that just because we become G20, everything is going to be fantastic, but this is the way you rise in the comedy of nations, millimeter by millimeter, mm. all right? You need to be keep pushing, pushing, pushing to come to a place. So, right now we are kind of little tilting towards the softer aspects of our culture, our music, our uh, yoga, our spiritual process. This is very important. This is a way to win somebody's heart. See, now if I am speaking, you listen to me and evaluating what I say, is it right, is it wrong, do I agree with it? Or... But if I sing for you, I have taken your heart. Once I have taken your heart, then it's so easy to do any transaction, isn't it? Very true. So in that way we are doing this because this is a, a complex multilateral process. It's mm. not going to happen just because your military is powerful, just because your economy is powerful, just because your science is powerful, it's not going to happen. And all levels we have to do. So, it's an incremental process and I think we are handling this smartly. Today I think we are handling our geopolitics in a very sensible and sane manner, I would say. Mm. In, you know, this meeting is happening at a time of global conflict, uh, the Russia-Ukraine war. Conflict. The Russia-Ukraine no, no, war. No, that's only one place. My point is, uh, does India then have a larger say and should India play a larger role in kind of ending that conflict? Because we, uh, as a race, as you mentioned, are all about peace, whether you look at Mahatma Gandhi or our spiritual beliefs also, it's always about peace. Uh, well, our uh, longing to live a peaceful life is not from post-Mahatma Gandhi era. It goes well before, not because we are uh, afraid of or averse to other ways of doing things, but we understand human beings thrive best when there is stability mm. in the outer atmosphere, which is peace. If you can't be ecstatic, at least you must be peaceful, you know <laughs> I would advise you to be blissful, but if that's not possible, at least peaceful. Hmm. Because that's the most fundamental requirement, to be individual human beings peaceful, society being peaceful, nations being peaceful, is the only way populations can thrive and live well, whatever we wish to do. But this idea of Peaceful coexistence is deep-rooted within us. At the same time, we have not been averse to that. When violence is needed, we have recommended that. All our legendary heroes fought battles, mm. but out of righteousness, not for conquest normally. So it is not that we are some pure, perfect creatures on the planet, but generally if you look at us, we have not been too avaricious to grab things. We have traded with the entire world of the known world of that time, enormous trading. But we didn't want to conquer them. Hmm. We wanted to include them, we wanted to make business out of it, we wanted to culturally share things, spiritually include them. It's a kind of an embrace because, not necessarily because we are averse to conquest either, simply because we are wise. See, if I conquer you, I have mm. to sit on top of your head and you will be doing everything to throw me off. But if I transact with you and if I capture your heart, if I capture your economic needs, your clothing you buy from me, your the food you buy from me, now you have a relationship with me which is far more enduring and uh, now the in word is sustainable. Yeah. So we always thought of sustainability. I don't think there is any one nation on the planet, any one civilization on the planet for that matter, who has existed in high levels of prosperity for fifteen hundred to two thousand years at a stretch. That happened only here. Because this wisdom that we have, that we understand, if we beat you and take what you have, then neither I can work. enjoy it nor you can enjoy it. If we transact with you and in do things in a smart way, I'll get little more than what you get and somehow we'll go on. But if I get everything, then you won't transact with me. Mm. It's out of wisdom.